Yeah, as I said, uh, my name is Helge Stranden. I'm uh, working in Uninet, in, based in Trondheim. And uh, I'm glad you can uh, join me on a recap for a project we did in uh, about three and a half years ago to uh, lay some subsea cables between Longyearbyen and Nyolesund on Svalbard. 270 kilometer uh, cables. Um, it's also information how to do this in general. Um, you have a lot of cables around the world on the seabed. They are laid normally on this, on, on directly on the seabed, but we are plowing them to, uh, we need to do that up there because of icebergs and so on. Um, for the marketing, you see me there. Uh, I borrowed some equipment and, uh, and the Uninet flag there on the, on the seabed. So that's, you should try that, that's fun. Um, our owners, Uninet owners, uh, Norwegian Ministry of Education and Research, they asked Uninet in 2010 to take a role to, to uh, install those cables. And we got uh, 90 million to do this. 90 million Norwegian, which is uh, close to 9 million euros. Why do we do this? And um, one of the main customers, if you can call it that, in Njolesund on Svalbard is the uh, Norwegian Mapping Authority. They need to send a lot of data to, uh, for example, Bonn in Germany to analyze data. And uh, the VLBI network is, consists of a lot of antennas around the world. And uh, as you can see here, we have two antennas. They have, will have a grand opening in June this year. And uh, now they are doing testing of those antennas. And they are sending uh, one gigabit per second down to uh, Bonn in Germany. Um, for the future, they expect each antenna to send 20 gigabit. So it's, the band we need is about 40 gigabit per second. And that can be 24 by 7. Um, I had to pick some colleagues to join me on this project. We, uh, we wanted to do it to be very much on site. We, we, we didn't want the uh, boring way to sit down and and ask someone else to do it and, and uh, move papers and take some phone calls. We wanted to be there as much as possible. So um, myself and uh, the next one, we uh, joined the vessels when we laid the cables and we have uh, two other experts uh, designing network onshore and also uh, expert expertise on uh, the WDM systems to get this connected. Um, it's a lot of sub-projects. Of course, we need to do some paperwork to, uh, to get, uh, get this started. It's very important as well to, to, um, to do a survey on the seabed because we are not allowed to... If, for example, we see a wreck on the, on the seabed, we need to be more than 100 meters away from it. And that's also on, on, uh, on the... Uh, Onshore part, if we see some woods, that should probably be some um, historic things from hunting fox or whatever. We need to be 100, 100 meters away from it. So that's some special rules we have up there. So because of that, it's very, very important that we analyze the, um, the uh, seabed. And uh, to avoid problems with um, with icebergs, we need to do this also in a special way. I will show you later on. Landings, right, where we get the cables up and uh, the main subsea cable lay. This is the plow and also ROE to control everything afterwards. As I mentioned, it's a lot of cables around the world. The most of them are um, just laid on the seabed typical uh, transatlantic cables. And you from Norway, here you see the, um, the cable from, from the north part up to Tromsø. That was laid in 2004. It's actually two cables. So 
longer been on Svalbard, they have had uh, network traffic through those cables since 2004, but not New Ålesund, which is uh, far north there. If you see it on this map, you see um, you see the uh, distance where we we'll have laid those cables, two times 270 kilometers. With this vessel, we didn't lay them on the sea, but we we plow them uh, two meters deep. Um, as I am in Sweden, I can tell you a small story, um, because. On one of my visits up here in Longyearbyen, I was in a bar, and I had a, had a, um, a speak to a young lady who had just have started to work there. She was from Sweden, I think it was from, from Gothenburg, and uh, she had been working here for two weeks. And he have she had applied to a lot of jobs in Norway, but she didn't remember to do some research. <laughs> because she meant that the job she had said yes to was close to Oslo. <laughs> and she started to work there. <laughs> so uh, some weeks I went back to the same restaurant and then she had left. <laughs> that said, it's a lot of Swedish uh, people that work there in uh, the restaurants and, uh, and uh, hotel business. So they're doing a great job in general, but they probably had done some research before they started. Um, if we go close up to, to um, Svalbard, we have Longyearbyen here, we have the Russian settlement Barnsburg, and we have a, a Long Island here, and we have New Orleans. We, um, we uh, plan to, to lay the cable between here, but it's on, on uh, this place is just five to six meter depth, and that's a problem for the cable ship. So we had to decide to go with both cables outside that island. island. Um, because we are working close to ice conditions, uh, you probably know that. Oh, sorry, uh, a little bit too fast there. Uh, if we if we um, say that. This one is 50 meters high, below the, um, the sea level, it's down to 85 meters. So if you see ice there, you have to calculate that it's a lot of ice below the sea level. So that's one problem. That can destroy cables, right? If you have cables on the seabed and they, they touch, they will be broken very easily. The other picture is the permafrost, which is a lot of up there. And uh, the darker, darkest part here is the uh, ones that is uh, the deepest. So, for example, if I point to something like here, it's about 500 meters deep. So, close to the sea, it's uh, just a few meters, right? So, it's, it's very different, depends on where you are. Longyearbyen is uh, right there. So in the settlement there, it's just a few meters. Um, to avoid problems with, um, with icebergs, we use the technique to drill from land down to the um, seabed. We ended up in about 20 meters. We don't do like this, it's showing that we could drill from both sides, we just drill from this side. And the uh, cable ship just uh, um, pull the cable down. And um, if I show you a little bit of this, this is the same technique that they often use when they are drilling below a river. But we use the same equipment. The, the fantastic thing with this is that you can, you can change the angle. So you can, uh, you can uh, steer from, from the equipment where to drill very easily. And you know where the drill head is all the time. So pushing will change the direction. 
and uh, spinning will uh, drill uh, the direction you want. We have to just go through this because uh, something is happening soon. This is typical for for um, for uh, rivers, as I said. And the um, the ground have to be quite soft. It cannot be rocks to do it that way. So you need to know that it's uh, quite soft to drill through. And if this was um, the seabed, then we did the following. We just uh, replaced the drill head to a bit, little bit uh, larger size and pull um, a pipe the same direction back. And through that pipe, we uh, pull the uh, uh, subsea cable. So in that way, it's very secure uh, from the, um, from the um, uh, icebergs. OK, a little bit about Longibin. Um, here is the settlement. It's about 2,000 um, people that live here. And on Svalbard, it's about 3,500 uh, polar bears. So it's more polar bears that, than people. I didn't see a single polar bear during this project. <laughs> and that's probably because they, they, they are not wearing Sigfox. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that should help. OK, in the, the, we have an university here. And there we placed uh, the WDM. And uh, four to five kilometers between those pictures, we have uh, DBDM installed on a mountain, where we also have a lot of uh, antennas for, uh, for other scientists. We have the uh, main runway for the airport. And uh, that's um, uh, almost all people that, uh, that go there. They, of course, they use the airport. You can also um, have a triple seven Boeing triple seven uh, plane, so it's, it could be pretty large. The uh, cables to the mainland is going here from the landings, those two, and the uh, cables we um, laid here to uh, New Orleans. Then we move to New Orleans. This this peak. Picture is from uh, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, after uh, several months with totally black environment, dark, pretty dark. Now the sun is coming. As we speak now, the sun is uh, is about uh, to come here as well. This is the um, fjord, which is called Kongsfjorden. This is open sea in this direction, back to um, to Longyearbyen. You have this settlement here. Where you winter time have, a, have about 35 people. Summertime, when you have summer scientists, is about uh, 180. You have the airport, and you have the VLBI station here. <coughs> so that's a pretty new station, which have been set up now uh, the last two years. The most people, they don't know that in this fjord, it's hundreds of Greenland sharks between 500 kilos and 1,000 kilos. They are uh, there because of um, seals. Young seals, they sleep on the seabed. And the Greenland shark, they, they are not very fast, but they just, while they are sleeping, they just go pretty close and grab them. We didn't see the, them either. Um, to uh, be able to connect our cables to uh, this settlement for the scientists, we first had to uh, install a cable between the antennas for the mapping authority into the uh, settlement. That's something they did locally. Then um, we used, I used two colleagues to install a cable here, three kilometer cable. It's, um, this is shallow water, so we just need to use, uh, or, or could just use small boats to do this. 
Uh, I also have some pictures from, from that um, install. And the first cable from uh, Longebin took uh, approximately one week to install that one. And after the second one to Longebin. And DVDM. We uh, installed DVDM here and the second one there. So we have a lot of redundancy in the system, all, all the parts of it. And um, Uninet, we have a lot of um, connections on the mainland. This is all the mainland, and this is the cables up to Svalbard. And we are thinking redundancy in everything we do, and that's also the, uh, the network. Longebin and New Olesen up here. So the cable. The cable we uh, laid. It's um, 24 fiber and uh, dual armed and um, can lay directly on the seabed, but uh, up there is a lot of icebergs, so that will be a problem. So we plow them down. Those cables if you stretch them, you can do that with 50 tons. I have seen that myself in, in the UK when they're doing testings. They just pull them like this for hours. 50 tons each time. But if you use something uh, 90 degrees on it, you can, you can break it, actually. You can. This is the main uh, cable ship, 150 meters long. So it's a pretty large one with uh, three tanks for cables. This is the um, actually the vessels from the from the uh, clip video clip in the beginning. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, they can open in in the front and and uh, take equipment out. Because of that, it's pretty flat. So when you have waves eight to ten meters, is a is a special situation to be there. And from, <coughs> from that ship, we could just, uh, this guy is uh, using a remote control to move this one from the ship and to the ground and start to uh, drill. This is the drill head. And uh, for every three meters they drill, they have to um, extend the, um, the, uh, the drilling and also connect a cable because they, they, they need to know where they are. So they, they, have, they have to get some communication from the uh, drill equipment to the drill head all the time. Here you see the, um, the uh, pipe is coming back, so it's ready to install. Here you also see the pipe, right? So it's uh, easy to, to pull the cable through. On this picture you see the uh, drill head before it's replaced to the, uh, the bigger one that could pull the cable back. Uh, sorry, the, the, um, the pipe back. And the less we see or hear from uh, the physical infrastructure from this project if in the future, the better, of course. So the uh, three kilometer cable, I, I showed you the green one, if you remember. Um, Different size matters. It's very f good to have one guy which is very tall and another one is not so tall. Um, that lady, she is uh, very um, uh, used knitting a lot, right? And that helps because we use 600, like this, 600 plastic jugs to float that cable out. And uh, every five meters, she did that work, right? As you can see, we was uh, lucky with the weather as well when we did this. And we used uh, protector shell from Barcelona, made in Barcelona, to uh, secure the cables on both ends. And there you see all the 600s when, when, the, done, uh, when the work was done and they are back. Lucky, we, we didn't need to move them to a mainland after. They, they want to use them. 
Logistics is very important on a project like this because it's far away, right? You understand that? So we got a lot of equipment from different places uh, in Europe. And um, you, you, can't, you can't sit up there and, oh, I forgot that one. That, that's, that's not the case. You, you can't do that. You have to be prepared all the time. Um, several vessels was involved. The survey of the seabed, this one, took three weeks. Uh, the uh, HTD, the drilling, took about uh, two and a half weeks. The main vessel, and uh, we, of course, we, we needed some divers to uh, do some work on the on the landings. And um, this is not something you normally see on the mainland, but up there you can do it. Um, <laughs> it's a moving rack, and I also uh, this first time in my life I have. Moved rack with a snowmobile, uh, probably the last one. Um, drilling and uh, other boats for yeah, different things. And the plow on the seabed. It's a 17 ton plow that uh, we pull with a, with a speed of about one knot. And you can't back. You have to just pull one way. You, you can stop, but it can be, an, can be an issue if you sink. So the best is to pull one knot all the time. So the cable is coming from the front here. You see they are, they are pulling with this. And the cable is going down here and under the, the uh, seabed. Preparing for... Uh, yeah, uh, just before we started. And we have to pull the cable from the vessel, right, up here. Um, the, the cable ship was from UK. And uh, before we started, they claimed that we, we should have a generator on each side. We, and they didn't say why. This cable is for making tea. The most important thing, <laughs> Englishman. Uh, still pulling the same cable with uh, tension about two tons, and they they measured that one in on this equipment very very um, very uh, exactly two tons. And uh, this is from the cable. Ship. You see the uh, plow there, the uh, divers, and the huts. It's here where we connected the cables. You see the airport, right? Up here. Yeah, one more picture of the plow is a really big thing. And the row, are we? That is, that is a picture from one of the cable tanks. And the uh, over cables was in two tanks in a high, like one meter. And the maximum in this uh, is about 10 meter. So we, this is a small project compared to uh, uh, international installation. Here you see the speed just here is um, half a knot. Uh, this cable coming up from the, one of the tanks. It's from the bridge. Every, every morning we had a meeting here to discuss uh, the next day's uh, uh, challenges on the seabed. Here you also see a view of the, um, the plow. Cable is coming in here, goes back here, down to two meters below the seabed. And yeah. Uh, the first lay of the first cable was very like this. The second was more like this. We had um, two to three days with, um, with uh, high waves, then we couldn't do anything. We just had to wait. And this view is in the morning when we come up to the bridge. And uh, what you see here is that the, um, the uh, navigators, they have just moved the boat a little bit to avoid um, problems on the cable. Because the cable, the, the, the cable can't be lifted up, the cable is on the seabed. So to avoid problems on the stern, 
they have to move the, sh the ship all the time. This is from uh, 20 meters depth, where we uh, pull the cable to one of the landings. And uh, this is some installation we did. The cable is coming here through uh, those units and uh, to the next excavator there and to the right again up. So that's something we, um, we arranged to, to, uh, to pull the cable very safely. You see the same here, the vessel and the first excavator, the second one is about there and the cable is going up here. And, uh, we used this winch to, uh, to pull the cable. Those units are just for secure that this one is not going away. And um, because of the, uh, the project and, and uh, for the future, we need to have some spare cables. So we have two times five kilometers of spare cables in uh, Njolusen ready for a potential broke of the cable. So we have everything we need. If we just we just need the, the, our ship, of course, to, to do it. But the, the cable we have. This is uh, one of the um, DVDM nodes. And this is the world northernmost high-speed network node in New Olesen. Yeah. DVDM and uh, some measurement, some, uh, the first trace route after we installed it. I have some uh, few, we didn't see a polar bear, but we, see, we saw several whales. This one is very close to the boat, a 20 meter uh, fin whale. We also have a 30 meter blue whale, very close. And some other uh, friends up there. And we um, celebrated with, uh, with a dive. We, we uh, borrowed the equipment from them. Some marketing, of course. We made a cake, very big one, with a uh, view of New Olesen. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>